This video was taped during the most adverse weather conditions of the 1987 deer season. Equip yourself to learn from the experts how to be successful when the odds are not always in your favor. Learn techniques as demonstrated by Noel Feather and Dan Fitzgerald. No Feather Hunting Videos presents Bitter Cold Bucks Featuring No Feather and Dan Fitzgerald To rattle up and kill a Boone and Crockett buck such as this is quite a feat but to take three Boone and Crockett white tails using this method has only been done by one man, Mr. Noel Feather. Hi there. I'd like to tell you a little bit about this video and uh, what we was trying to accomplish when we made it. Uh, most of the footage of this video was filmed at zero temperatures or below. Uh, one particular morning, it was 18 below zero. And that's too cold to be in the woods, but we was we was out there. Uh, fact is, our cameraman he uh, he couldn't take but about a half hour of it. And his feet got cold. And he went the van on. We didn't kill a deer that morning, but uh, we did get some good footage. But uh, what I wanted to show was uh, the horn rattling or grunt calls and the use of lure will work in the late season the same as they'll work earlier in the year. Now, they're not going to work maybe as well. Uh, the month of November, there's no doubt about it, is probably the best time of year to you know, kill a deer. But uh, you can't just hunt the month of November, or at least I can't. i got to be out there trying uh, in December, too, when it gets cold. Uh, a lot of guys will quit hunting by Thanksgiving. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, they're, they're making a, a big mistake. I think some of the, the best hunting is later on in the year. And the reason for that is that uh, the hunting pressure is a lot less in the late season than it is early. Because everybody's out hunting in October. It's beautiful weather, beautiful scenery. It's a good time of year to be in the woods. I love to hunt then. But uh, in the late season, over half of the hunters probably are going to be home watching television, watching football or whatever. And uh, this is when I really like to hunt is because you don't have the pressure. A deer is, uh, he's operating on his normal instincts. He's, uh, he's not uh, nearly as apt to, uh, you know, be a spooky with so many people in the woods. It's, he's not acting normal. I mean, like during gun season, everybody's out there. These deer are running around, their tongue hanging out, you know, breathing hard and, uh, he just he's just going crazy running from one place to another uh, trying to, to get away from people and during the late season why there's not nearly as much pressure and a buck is that uh, operating normally you can take lure or you can take grunt call you can take horns and I think it's you have a better chance of, uh, of bringing him in the hunting is not nearly as good uh, looking at the rut I mean the rut the first rut is over and uh, the rut thing probably isn't quite as good as it would be in November, but there, there is other advantages. And so if you don't mind the cold, you're willing to put up with it, I think it's a good time of the year to kill a trophy buck. Uh, at this time, I would like for you to, I'd like to take you into the woods and show you some of the footage and uh, some of the kills that we had. And uh, I think you'll be, uh, I think you'll be impressed with it. Nationally known bow hunter and guide Dan Fitzgerald sets up his tree stand in a woodlot, bordering a swamp on one side and a stubble cornfield on the other. Dan's intentions are to attempt to intercept a buck from his bedding area to the stubble corn, where most of the deer in the area are now being forced to feed.
Hunting on such cold days can be very rewarding even if you are unsuccessful. It has a tendency to make you appreciate the warm camp awaiting after you are half frozen. Some days you wonder if it's worth leaving that warm bed. But at the first glimpse of deer movement, that thought is soon erased. Noel and Dan would be hunting on opposite sides of the swamp. Dan would try calling with his natural voice using various vocalizations, such as fawn distress calls, doe calls, and grunt calls. Dan has successfully called many bucks using this method over the years. Though he now prefers the grunt call used by Noel, making it much easier to get the volume out to distant bucks, especially during the rut. Dan's first attempts bring in this yearling doe. Dan could have taken this deer and shortened his stay in a cold stand, but preferred to wait for a buck. The waiting paid off, for in a short time the calling attracted this buck. Once the buck spotted the doe, he decided to try to pursue her. Dan believes in shooting all the poundage one can handle efficiently to be able to penetrate bones if that be the case. Here Dan is shooting 90 pounds. Dan continued to call and brought the doe right under his stand. 
And then... Notice the Danzero passes through the buck and sticks in the snow on the opposite side. This buck did not know what hit him.
There's the arrow. I told you, I shot right through him. Where was the deer standing when he hit him? He was standing just like this, angling this way. What happened, he was he was walking this way, and I, I got him, I thought I got him right in the lung, but it went on an angle like that, and I might have got him in the guts too. Uh -huh. The reason I think that, see on one side of this arrow, see this Man, right he here? definitely got guts. There's, looks like a lot of red blood but there. he got blood too, and so. guts too. But look at that blood trail. Man, he nah, is pouring. You got more than just guts. There's no doubt about that. You wouldn't have got that much blood. I'd give it's him been blood. quite I'd, a while. I'd give him, I'd give him a little more time. There's no use taking a chance. If you jump him, you know, if you didn't hit anything, you don't put him down. His guts is going to kill him, but it ain't going to kill him quick. It's been quite a while, but I'll tell you what. I can stand the weight on him if you want to go have a coffee. No, that's fine with me. We can have a coffee and, you know, come back as long as we, we should leave ourselves plenty of light, you know, for tracking. How'd you do over there this morning? Didn't do any good at all. You didn't see any deer? I seen two little ones. They was off, they was off towards that swamp, but never even, nothing down below. Man, was it cold over there. Oh, man. I'll tell you what, man, it was. That This buck was chasing two does. One of them come by me a couple of times. I could have got it uh, come right by me close. He, ch he chased her all over that woods, though. Well, I could I see them out there I'm running. Sure, I'm sure they're still chasing them. That's, that's why they'll come to Rathorns yet in the late season. You know what happened? He was chasing, it looked like a yearling doe. There's a little doe, and she probably just coming in heat. And he was chasing that little doe all around. Oh, good thing. He, there was two does running through there, but that or little one just ran Or sometimes they'll be bred early in the year, and, and they don't stick. They'll come back in, you know, they'll come back in season again later. Well, let me tell you, you ain't going to believe this. This is a four-pointer about that wide. Four-point buck? A four-point buck about that wide. Points, his main beams are about that long. And he splits off on the end, but he's just a four-pointer. Is this for real, or is this one of them that you exaggerate? <laughs> you do have a tendency to exaggerate. <laughs> this, is a, this is a big, big four-pointer. It's like one of them you always tell me he's got a rack this wide, you know. <laughs> We're not hunting elk. We're hunting deer. Uh, I just got back from elk hunting, though. I, I still got elk on the brain. <laughs> I got a foot wet crossing the creek. Let's crack, go so have I'm, some coffee. I'm ready to, I'm ready to uh, head in and get some guys on. Well, there's blood. There's a lot of blood there. Yeah, he's leaving. I think I got part of a lung. Or I got one lung and some guts. He's looking pretty good. Yeah. He should go too far. He's he got more than guts. There's no doubt about that. We more than blood. I don't know what it is. Yeah, he should be down. He's bleeding pretty good. Yeah, he, he didn't get both lungs, but he would never run. Probably that Man, there's a lot of blood there. He must have stopped right there. Look at that blood. He's still bleeding good right there. He ain't going too much blood. There's where he laid down right there. Yeah, and there's your there, buck. There he is. There's, there's right. the buck. There he is. He laid down here for quite a while. Well, he laid down there. There's the buck. There's the buck. He's <laughs> well, I thought it was a four pointer. He's got brow time. He's got two on the side. A little bitty brow time. A little bitty time. That's, that's not too bad a brow time for a six point buck. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That sucker's heavy. That's a heavy rack for a, for a uh, six point buck. Man, look at that thing. Look how wide that is right there. Thick too, he's massive, you know. Look at here, how thick he is right there. Well, I told you he's wide four corner. He must have had my glasses on backwards. <laughs> he's, a, he's a wide one, all right. I've, I've never seen a six corner much heavier now. That's a good buck, it really is. What it is? Looks like a mule deer. You had to have seen them prowl times. <laughs> told you I had my glasses on backwards. Bad Didn't have a regular hat on. Yeah, put her there. <laughs> He's a good one. Well, he's got a high rack. Man, ain't that nice? Rack is high. Yeah. Chasing the doe, huh? Man, he was chasing that doe around and around. It was a yearling doe, a That's, little doe. This is not a very old buck. No, he's probably. What, what do you think he is? Ain't no way to tell. No, not without looking at his teeth, but I'll bet you he's not over two and a half, three years old. He looks, he just looks young. But he's got a lot of horn for a buck that size. You know what? 
You missed it by not being over here, though. He was grunting up a storm. If you'd have been over here with a grunt call, you'd have been able to manipulate him around. It's been fun to play with him. I didn't do any good at all over there, I think. Not at all. I didn't have a camera with me anyway, so it wouldn't make a lot of difference this morning. We only saw him and the two does. That's all we saw. But anyways. Well, let's get him back camp. He's a good one. I'm ready to go back and get some. Is it cold enough? It's cold enough to suit me. Man, my what. smile's froze. <laughs> 20 below this morning, I don't think it's warmed up much. Well, you, there's my stand in that pine tree right there. Uh, well, we know they've been bedding yeah. over in this swamp. Yeah. If we can get set up here, if I can find a good spot to get set up where I can get hid pretty good to rattle, you're gonna go in this tree right here. Yeah, if, if they're gonna... They're probably going to be coming out of that swamp, headed this way. So, like right in down in them dead logs right there. How would that be for you to get down in there? Well, that way you're you're a good 50 yards from my stand. Tree bark should blend in pretty good with that big tree. So yeah, that's probably as good as any these All pines. Right. Why don't uh, Why don't you go ahead and get your tree, and then I'll go ahead over and get set up. I'll tell you what. If you can't rattle one up in a half hour. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to head back, buddy. I don't know if I can take much of this. <laughs> Man, this is tough. Let's, give her Let's do it. On this day, it was 18 degrees below zero, with the wind blowing hard out of the swamp. Dan decides to get in a high stand so as not to alarm a buck in case one comes by his stand. This is one of Dan's favorite setups for all times of the hunting season, October through December. He has taken many trophy bucks from this tree. Notice the ice forming on Dan's beard. positions himself further downwind and prepares to rattle.
Dan remembers several times when it was worth the effort to withstand the cold in this location. Getting only those to respond and then seeing them leave with flags erect, Dan knows he will be unsuccessful this day. sets up and attempts to rattle a buck for Tom.
Dan decides to give his cameraman, Tom Sell, a chance to take a buck. This will be Tom's first shot ever at a buck. Notice the arrow as it enters high in the buck's back. Tom got more penetration than meets the eye as Tom shoots a full 33 inch arrow. I tell you what, you shot him when he was right in front of that tree. I don't know if uh, I got, I don't know if I got the hit, but I got him running with the arrow. Did he get it on film? I don't know. He's saying that it's you behind think, the tree. You think you got her, Dan? He shot it when it was right in front of the tree. I know I got the deer running with the arrow, but I don't know if I got the contact man, I of it. I tell you what, I wish I'd had the camera with me. I can see it, man. I can see it perfect. Oh, you got him good. He went right down through his back into his he lungs. Sneaking in there, he didn't know what was going on though, did he? That little son of a gun. Well, I said, little that ain't bad buck. For, no, he's for nice. A first, for a first buck guy, you That's should right. be you should be proud of him. Yeah. yeah. Me like that you hit him a little bit too far back. Yeah. Could, could you tell anything, Dan? It was high. You got him high in the back, right down through the middle of the back. You almost spine shot him. If you, yeah, I grew up and go along with that. But it looked like he was angled forward. So if you did, you know, if he's angled forward enough, you should have got a lump, at least one, maybe two. I don't know. And I hope it's good let's, enough. Let's go to see what he finds. What? There's some blood. There's blood here. Here's blood, Dan. He took my arrow, wasn't he? Yeah, you think... The arrow was still in him. Yeah, I saw the arrow, too. I hope that's on the fence. what? I think we should wait, even though I think it's a good hit. I think we should give him at least an hour 
and, and start tracking one with snow, we shouldn't have any problem. And then can? if we don't do any, you know, if we come back in an hour and we don't find him right away, we'll give him another couple hours. But I, I think it's, I think it's a good deal. He'll bed down somewhere. He'll lay down if we don't push him. So I think that's the thing to do. Let's no, give him, let's give him a good hour then. Okay. Well, we've come about 150 yards. I hope I got a lung. There he is. Come out here. Hey. He's a dandy. That's a nice first buck, buddy. Boy, you know, when he come in, I could see snow and ice froze to that son of a gun. I know, he looked cold. I don't see how they take the, all the cold weather they did. I warmed him up, though. <laughs> <laughs> you warmed him up, all right. What's he got? Six, eight? Oh, one, two. What is this? Is this kind of a deduction? It's an inch long. Yeah. Four on each side. I'd say about seven. That's, what, that's at yeah, least seven. an inch long. Yeah. No, he's a nice buck. Yeah. I tell you what, this late season hunting's tough. I don't see how these deer, I don't see how they get by as good as they do. But at least one thing made a believer out of you, didn't it, on that horn round in, sure in the late season? <laughs> I appreciate your help. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was glad to do it for you. I was just happy we could get the job done. It don't always work like that, you know. Well, he come in there, man. Noel will attempt to bring a buck to this stand, one of Dan's favorites. Dan thought at this point, would this be Noel's fourth Booney Crockett? Thank you. 
Not this one. After several days of unsuccessful hunts, Dan takes Noel to a different location where there was much buck activity during the rut. Dan and Noel both prefer to shoot heavy bows even in extreme cold weather. They say there is a certain feeling of confidence knowing you have the horsepower when it counts. Dan wasn't sure whether or not they would stir any bucks, but it would be worth a try as the season was fast coming to an end.
often the cameraman spots the deer before the hunter. Notice the body heat, escaping as the arrow passes through the deer. The heavy poundage pays off again. Was that cool? What do you think Whoa. of that? Guy? That was <laughs> you ever neat. seen him make your life like that? Hey, that's the fastest I've ever seen a deer die. I thought he was going to die right there in front of me. That deer only lived five, ten seconds. That arrow went through that deer so quick he didn't even know what hit him. He turned around. I didn't even think he was going. I thought he was going to die right there. He turned around and front when he did take off, he was staggering. That's he, the most humane kill I've ever seen. He didn't go 25 yards. I know it. Man, he's a he, dandy though, ain't he? Look at there. That stinking tree. 
When I swung that camera around, I couldn't stay on in that big tree right in front of my stand. I never anticipated he'd go around behind me like that. You mean you didn't get it on footy? Oh, yeah. I got him running to that tree, and then that tree was in my way. I didn't see where he went until did he jumped you, did, you, did you see him go down? Oh, I saw him. I got him dying on the video, but I couldn't get him. He, the tree blocked him for three oh, or four Christ. seconds. But oh, I got him running around. I got him until the tree got my way, and then I got him dying. I got him dying. Well, maybe we got something worth we can use. I don't know. We'll just, we'll I, that. that tree was right my the, way. I tried on man, both sides a, to get past that tree. That'd and be I couldn't a shame if we, if we Oh, I got him. If we don't get this on I'll tell you what, film. when he ran away, I could see the blood streaming right out of the bottom of that hole where you shot through his I heart. know. Even before he run, it looked like a faucet, man. It was just pouring out there on the ground. Uh-huh. Did, did, did you see him when he was when he was coming? I seen him. Oh, like, he was two, three hundred yards away. Did you I see him? the little buck ahead yeah. of him? He, one of those two bucks was grunting. Every time you'd grunt, they'd grunt back. Uh, it's I probably could hear this, him It was probably this buck here. But man, I tell you, I could see that dude sneaking in there, that little buck. I, I could see him real good. Yeah. But I wasn't sure if you, the angle where you was at, you know, if you was getting it. Well, I got quite a bit of the, the stuff of the, the bucks coming There's in. There's the arrow sticking in the ground, right where it went through the deer. He did not go. I couldn't believe. He it. did not go 25 yards. You know, he. I've never seen a deer I never act like that before. I, I mean, it went through him so fast that he just did not know what happened. I've had I've had guys say that. I heard guys say they put an arrow through a deer and deer took a couple steps and started eating. But I never ever had it happen. Any deer I ever shot, they just run like crazy till they dropped. I don't think this one could have done any eating. <laughs> I think he was pretty sick. <laughs> Man, I never in my life seen anything like that. Let's get him tagged and get back to camp. Okay, no. He's a dandy. Well, I'll tell That's you. A good one. Well, you've seen a little bit about what I was talking about. I think you can tell from the way the ice and the snow was froze there in old Dan's beard that one morning she was 18 below zero that it was a little bit chilly. Uh, that was the morning we lost our, our cameraman. There's a couple things that I didn't mention when I was talking earlier. Uh, the fact that there's no foliage on the trees in the late season is a big advantage. You can see a deer a lot farther, and this is especially helpful when you're horn rattling. And uh, usually in the late season, you've got snow on the ground. It's real crunchy and uh, makes a lot of noise when a deer is walking. You can hear him for a greater distance. And this gives you a chance to uh, also see the deer, uh, hang up your rattle horns, or even if you're not horn rattling, just be ready. Get that bow and be ready because uh, that makes a lot of difference. So uh, these are some of the things that, uh, that I think are advantages to hunting in the late season. Uh, as I always tell everybody in my seminars, uh, you can't kill a deer uh, sitting home watching television. So the guy that spends the most time in the woods and uh, works at it the hardest, I think he's going to be the, the guy that ends up the luckiest, especially putting in the time. And uh, all the days are not cold. There's a lot of times out there in the late season it may be uh, 30, 40 degrees. And that's a super time to be out. I mean, that's like hunting in uh, latter October, the first part of November. So uh, these are some of the, some of the advantages. And uh, if you've never hunted the late season, it's definitely worth a try. So uh, get out there next season and, uh, and give it a whirl. At this time, I'd like to thank you for... Uh, buying this video and uh we uh we enjoyed bringing it to you and uh i hope you enjoyed watching